Hello everybody, welcome back to the last part of the course on squeezes and um, this is uh, going to be partly a review and partly something different. Uh, so far everything I've done has been to introduce you to the basics of squeezes and then we examine our hands and look for the elements that make up the squeezes, the threats and the entries and so on. And I introduce you slowly, one by one, into all the different types of elementary squeezes, the simple squeezes and the double squeezes. Um, today, I want to suggest to you <coughs> an alternative way of looking at these same squeezes. This is useful, especially when you have hands where you have a choice of squeezes and you're wondering which squeeze to actually go for. Uh, so here's the idea, it's a, it's a classification of the squeezes, uh, which answers, uh, you have to answer three questions and then finally look for the task results. The question number one is, is there a busy player or uh, is there not a busy, either threat split or are the threats all in the same hand? So, um, and that immediately tells you whether you're going to be looking for simple squeezes because you have a busy player or whether you're going to be looking for double squeezes because the threats are split between the two hands. Uh, the second thing you go for then, now let's suppose that there is a busy player, then the next question is where are your threats? And let's suppose first of all that they are split, so they're also in different hands. Well, this is the best type of uh, situation to have because normally it leads to uh, automatic squeezes then the third thing you check for is where are your entries does it actually permit the squeeze so when you have an entry um, and the your threats are split you have the possible you, you do need to end up in the right hand um, you will actually have a, a, a simple position uh, sorry simple automatic squeeze um, if you actually don't have entries, well, there's uh, a, a rare positional squeeze on where you've got uh, a sort of entry card opposite one of your threats. So you have to have something like ace doubleton opposite queen doubleton uh, with a king missing as, 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 a, as a guard card against your queen. And uh, even though the ace is not with the threat of the queen, uh, there is actually a positional squeeze in that position. So you need to check for that as well. Um, the other option, of course, having got to there is a busy player, where are the threats? The threats are in the same hand. Well, this one's easy to finish off. Um, do you have an entry? Well, I hope so, because uh, if you have an entry, you have a positional threat. So you also need to check, uh, are, is the busy player in the right place? And if uh, you don't have an entry, well, sorry, there isn't a squeeze uh, that's going to evolve the line of thinking. Going right back to the beginning, we said, are the threats together or are they split? And um, I actually, <laughs> in writing this out for the notes, I, I thought, oh, I use the opposite of busy. And I, I looked it up and it said idle and lazy. And I thought, well, I don't want to describe my opponents as idle and lazy. But another option was at leisure is the opposite of being busy. So I thought, what a wonderful phrase. So from now on, if the threats are split, I'm going to say that my opponents are at leisure because I don't have a busy opponent. Anyway, we have split threats this time. Now, immediately then, sorry, split guards, split guards. Immediately you know that you're only looking at double squeezes because uh, if, if the guards are split, you cannot do a simple squeeze. So now again, it's a matter of following through the routine. Next thing is, where are your threats? Because that uh, determines the type of uh, uh, double squeezes which are possible. So first of all, suppose they're split between the two hands. Uh, well, this um, leads to the positional squeezes. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting that uh, when you have simple squeezes, split threats are, are very, very good, and you get automatic squeezes, and everything, and <coughs> it's vice versa once you go to double squeezes. The, uh, the split threat leads to the uh, positional squeezes, and similarly, uh, 
with the automatic switches. Anyway, uh, stop getting a date. I'm digressing. Uh, so here we are with uh, the threat split between the two hands. It's good in one way because you, you do need a central suit for these double squeezes, but it's quite a modest one of a winner and an irritant. But the big restriction, of course, is that uh, are the uh, threats lying over the guards because it is positional and that's what you need for the squeeze to work so check that out and if everything's fine that's a squeeze once you see once you've got one of these squeeze sorted you don't have to go bothering about any of the others uh, so that we could do this we could do that if you hit on one that's going to work well it's going to work so uh, off you go and actually execute it finally uh, we have a double squeeze the threats are in the same hand well that leads to the automatic squeezes but there's a big heavy requirement here that you have a double entry central suit so you've got to have something like ace king small in one hand or if you like you can split that up and have uh, ace to three in one hand and king doubles in, in the other either of those will act as a central suit but having the double double entry is quite a strong um, sorry not double entry uh, extended uh, extended entries uh, is quite a strong requirement uh, on that. Uh, but coming right back to the beginning, if we start, and really this is for experienced players, because if you're going to start with saying, where are the guards, already you have some idea of where your threats are, because guards are only guards against threats. So you will already have in mind that, oh, this is a suit with the threat in and the guard is over there. But to say, if you've reached that stage, and I think we all, we've played through enough hands that we can actually um, uh, do that now, uh, you will find that where you have choices of squeezes, especially, it's very good <clears throat> at helping you do the analysis to uh, see which squeeze is the right squeeze to actually go for. So, I've got a few hands to actually illustrate that, and because they have other points in them besides the squeezes, I'm actually going to uh, do them all myself this time, so uh, I'm sorry I'm ruining all your fun, uh, but there we go. Uh, so, on to the first one, which is showing at the moment, and I... Uh, let me have a look at my notes. Is there, there's no actual record here, but the only bid is uh, two no trumps, which is um, seven to nine, no, seven to ten, and five five in the minors. So hopefully that has come up as a <clears throat> seven to naught. So oh, well, never mind. 7 to 10 and 5-5 five, five in the minus, which uh, means almost certainly that I read this in a magazine because these certainly aren't my methods and they're not very common methods for BBO either. Uh, I've always wanted to try them. Every time I go suggest to one of my partners, let's have a bit of fun today, they always shout at me and say, next week, uh, next month, next year. Anyway, no. So I never actually played them. Um, I suspect they're not effective because... Uh, Otherwise, more people would take them up. There's always a danger in these sorts of methods that, uh, yes, you have fun and make the bidding a bit awkward for your opponents, but then when it comes to the play, they have a blueprint of your hand to help them uh, play the contract. Okay, so 7 to 10, um, um, partner uh, passes. Next person chooses. I suppose he should alert it, really, because it might be two. Go on, might. Be two, two, three clubs. And we have a chance to be at last. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a singleton. And they're bidding clubs at the moment. So personally, I'm tempted to bid, but partner's almost certainly going to carry me to game if I do. I don't really think I should bid at this juncture. So I'm going to pass, and the next person passes, but hey, we're still alive. Partner comes in with a double. So once again, I'm facing a choice because partner passed initially, and with most of my partners, I have agreed methods to to these things. Given that they have bid um, clubs and diamonds, 
happens. I never play the clubs and diamonds bids as natural. So my normal agreements with partners is that if I bid clubs, I'm strong with the lower of the major. So that would be hard. So if I bid diamonds, I would be strong with the higher of the majors. And if I just bid hearts or spades, I'm merely competing uh, without a stronger hands if I cubid their suit to show the additional strength. So partner and, and double would be for penalties or, or an offer to play them double at least one of their suits. So it's a bit worrying that partner didn't bid the first time, but I suppose he he might have both the majors and didn't want to double because that would offer penalties. I'm not sure. Anyway, I don't get rich by playing in part scores at this sort of scoring. So I'm going to bid four hearts and cross my fingers that partner had a good hand, which he just couldn't actually show. So the lead is the king of clubs. And... Uh, well, I see partner stretched a bit with his double. Uh, the club looks pretty useless. He obviously thought I would just bid at the three level. Oh, uh, well, this is how life goes, doesn't it? Still, uh, all is not lost. Um, if the heart finesse is right, perhaps we can, and it probably is. Um, uh, oh, I've been careless here. He would play the eight, of course, because he has a double thing. Uh, I should try and pretend I have... I don't want him playing the clubs. So I'll try and convince him that it's partner who has four. But I failed to do so. What a shame. Okay. Now, normally, I would throw my losing diamond here. Uh, but the trouble with that is I've got two clubs. And... I'll just get another club on the next round. So I think I have to rough this. Uh, what do I have? The six, seven, eight, nine, ten round. It doesn't matter what I rough it, not the two. Let's try roughing with a six. Ah, right, well, there we go. So the uh, finesse was right, but obviously I'm not going to take it. This is not going well, is it? Uh, never mind. Uh, oh, okay. That's interesting, because now I know that East has King, Queen of Spades. So I'm now in a position to try and work out what to do with the contract. Let's count up that tricks. I have five hearts, Ace of Spades for six, Ace, King of Diamonds for eight, and I need ten. I can make one more trick if I rough a club. Um, that would bring me up to nine, and maybe there's a squeeze. And I see there's another way of reaching nine, because I could reverse the dummy. I could actually rough two spades, and while the roughing the first spade doesn't gain a trick, the second spade rough would reduce my trumps below the length of the trumps in dummy, so that would engender another trick. So I could, if I wish to rough two spades and also bring my trick count up to nine. Well, uh, after that, I am going to need a squeeze because I've got no natural way. Uh, there's nothing else I can actually set up. So I need to work out which squeeze I want to go and play for. So let's start with the threats that I know about. I know that East has... The guard, sorry, I guarded. I know that East is guarding the spades, that's on the right. I know that West is guarding the clubs. And if I believe West, I've probably got threats in the diamonds, because if West really is 5-5, five, five, or some people don't understand these bids and they open with 5-4, but if he has got five diamonds, I would have threats in the diamonds as well. So with threats in all the suits, I've got quite a lot of choice here. Anyway, let's go for those I know about. I know that there's um, a spade threat on the right, a guard on the right. I know that there's a club and probably a diamond guard on the left. So let's go for those. Those are split threats. My opponents are at leisure, is my knowledge. Race. And if they're split, then I can only go for double squeezes. Uh, 
So I need a central suit. Well, clearly that's got to be diamonds. And um, uh, that means I'm looking at a club and spades as my threat suits. So where do they lie? Well, the club lies in the south hand. The spade lies in the north hand. And that is a positional double squeeze. And the threats have to lie over the guards, and they don't. The guards lie over the threats. So I can give up on the double squeeze involving the spade suit with the club suit, or for that matter, with the diamond suit. There's no way of progressing with that. Uh, what about the other threats? Well, my other threats were clubs and diamonds. So where are the threats? They're in the left hand. I have a busy player in diamonds and clubs. Um, where are my threats? Oh, sorry, that's the guard. I keep saying threats for guard. Sorry. Uh, where are my threats? Well, i got the six of clubs in one hand. Uh, best if I use the ace and ten of diamonds in the other hand. So that would be a simple squeeze with an entry. I definitely can squeeze west on the left-hand side. At least I can definitely squeeze him, providing I've still got that six of clubs. So that tells me what I've got to do now. I've got to preserve the six of clubs in order to have a simple squeeze, and that means my ninth trick has to come from the dummy reversal in the spades. Oh, well, glad I worked that out. So here we go. I want to rough these out to get an extra trick. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't want these big trumps that are in the way. And I get style points as well for roughing with aces. Um, cross back to the heart. And now the ten. Okay, so this is where I gain my additional tr trick. And now I'm all ready for my um, uh, for my squeeze. So I'm going to uh, the, the simple way to see it is probably if I play off the ace of uh, no, no. I need the diamond. To, I need to end up in my hand, don't I? I need, need the king of diamonds to come back. So. Um, Let's play that across to the jack, and then the seven, to the five, and the two, and I can afford one diamond. And now finally, I cross back to hand, and West should already have been squeezed here, because West has had to keep the club... He's got the ten of clubs left, so I'm going to come back to my hand with the king and play out my entry suit. Yes, there's the jack. Yes, there's the queen. Lovely. And I've made my contract in the way there. So you see what I mean about you've got to be fairly experienced in squeezes. Um, I was immediately going for the guards of where they lay, and the advantage of this new way of thinking about things is that you, when you have various options, it's actually quicker, it's much quicker to do it in your head than me talking about it out loud, actually. But because I knew where the spade guard was and I knew where the club guard and the diamond guard was, I was able to run this, are they split, are they together, where are my threats? That permits a certain type of squeeze. Do I have the entries for that squeeze? So it was no for a squeeze involving the spades, and then it was yes for a squeeze involving the diamonds and the clubs. Once you focus on which squeeze you want, then you know how to go and play that. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Maggie. It's, of course, normally much more confused than that, but uh, I've had a whole week to prepare. So, uh, okay, upload the next deal to the table. And my notes here said this is from a BBO competition. Uh, but I haven't been very forthcoming because I haven't said what sort of a competition and I haven't told myself what system people were playing. So it's all 
apart from that little note, I, I don't know much about this end. Anyway, it was a pass initially. And uh, my partner's got a one spade opener, so one spade it is. And uh, pass again, and clearly I've got a two diamond bid here. Um, quite a strong hand, really, but I've two suits to show, so you, you just bid in the normal way. And then there was a three clubs intervention from the opposition. Um, so... Um, I uh, don't know about that. I mean, these things... Uh, he's probably got a good quality six-card suit here uh, because uh, he's not vulnerable. He, he might actually... There's various, He might be hoping to get some sort of sacrifice against a vulnerable game. Partner doubles, and this is where I became irritated when I decided to use the hand because I had no idea what system partner was playing. I'm assuming it was Ackle because in Ackle... Uh, a double shows a strong no trump. It doesn't necessarily say you're short in the clubs. You could have as many as three clubs. You're not supposed to have four. Uh, but a double does show a strong no trump in Akon. I'm not quite sure whether it's the same in... Uh, well, it can't be the same in two over one because you would have opened with one no trump if you had a... Um, uh, uh, 15 to 17 hand. So you can assume the partner is 15 plus, probably 16 plus, uh, and if anything, short in the club. So just, I know that because I can see his hand. I, I know that if I knew what system he was playing, I assume it is Ackle. Um, he's been four clubs. So uh, I'm now getting quite excited because... If partners got as little as ace king to five spades and ace of clubs or ace of diamonds, um, surely I can set up partners. That's that's only eleven points so far. Surely I can set up partners' uh, spade suit to go and throw away my two losing, two losing. Or maybe he's got the queen jack of hearts. Or there's all sorts of things partner might have, in which my hand has one loser. Uh, I don't know for sure, of course. He might be full of kings and queens, but the odds are he has got two aces. And see, the odds are he's got ace, king of spades, I reckon. So I'm going to... Um, I mean, I could be four hearts, but partner will pass in his sleep. He's shown his hand. I, I really think I've got to do something exciting here um, by bidding five clubs to see... We should be alerted, of course, but... Hey, I'm talking to you, aren't I? It's pass. Come on, partner. Tell me about your hand. Uh, and and I'm thinking then he doesn't have four hearts in spite of his double. And I think he doesn't have solid spades. I think rather than double, he might have repeated his spade suit. I still think slam is on. I am going to bid six diamonds. And hope that partner is not an absolute minimum for his bidding so far. The lead at the table was the Ace of Clubs. And uh, I can tell you now, if it had led something different, like the Jack of Spades, this, he would have defeated the contract. And this again is a drawback of the style of bidding where you're very aggressive and uh, start bidding this, that, and the next thing, because uh, East, of course, has made an aggressive bid of four clubs, and I'm fairly sure it was that uh, attempt to make life difficult for me in the bidding, which has encouraged West to go and lead the Ace of Clubs. Normally, it's counterproductive to lead Aces. You keep the Aces to, to beat the Kings, but um, uh, say... It's all, I, I see this in the magazines all the time. Uh, people go and do outlandish bids, and then the opposition bid on. And I, I just have the feeling that the people are fondly remembering the rare occasion where they're bidding achieve some magnificent result, and the, the opposition played in, in uh, four spades just making when they had seven clubs on or something. Uh, but they're forgetting all the times... The, the bidding helped the opposition 
to uh, or, or misled them as misled the opposition themselves, as here, uh, to do the wrong thing. So I, I'm not madly in favour of uh, some of these things myself. Anyway, uh, let's press on. We are obviously going to do that. And now the Queen of Clubs follows. Okay. So what have I got? So I've got six diamonds, and I've got a spade for seven, and three hearts for ten, and a king of clubs for eleven. Excellent news. So how can I get another trick? Well, um, uh, the hearts might break. Uh, always a, a key moment where we say, oh, maybe there's a squeeze on. Always integrate three, three breaks into squeezes if you can. The spade finesse might work. And if it isn't working, I guess the queen of spades would be a threat as well. Is the spade working? Well, once again, the bidding has kind of helped me. Um, at least the play has. West couldn't open. Now, I reckon that West has six clubs at least has three so I think West would have opened with the king of spades these days most people with ace king queen to six clubs and a king will open the bidding and not only that what could East have to go and raise three clubs to four clubs um, there's not very many top high cards missing so I reckon the spade finesse is wrong and I am not going to take the spade finesse um, but that does mean I've got a threat in the clubs and a threat in the spades and a threat in the heart suit. Oh, so many choices, so many choices. How do I analyse them? Well, my new method is to go for where do I know the guards are? Well, I don't know anything about the hearts, but I do know a lot about the club and about the spade suit. I'm fairly sure that East has a spade guard and West has a club guard. But I know West has a club guard. That means that my opponents are at leisure. The threats are split and I only need to look for... Um, sorry, the guards are split. And I only need to go looking for double squeezes. Do I have a central suit? Oh, I've got a superb central suit. Uh, I've got a triple winner central suit in the heart suit, so no problem there. So the last thing is, where are my threats? Well, I've got um, a threat in the club suit, uh, a threat in the spade suit. They're in the same hand, and that leads to automatic squeezes. Uh, that's good for automatic squeezes. I need a, uh, a double entry, um, or not a double, an extended threat suit. And I've got it in spades. Oh, no, no, not in spades. I've, I've got it in hearts. Well, I've got it in spades is a phrase that means I've got a super duper threat. I've actually got both types of uh, double entry central suit. I can either think of this as I've got ace, queen, seven of hearts, and I just cash the queen to turn it into a pure holding, or I could go for a split holding. I could go for ace, seven, six as my three-card suit opposite queen doubleton. In the other hand, imagine I'm cashing the king, and then I've turned it into the sort of holding where... I do have uh, um, a double entry, but they're split. Sorry, not extended entry, but they're split between the two holdings. So, yes, I've got split. Yes, I've got threats. Yes, it's going to be an automatic. And yes, everything is working. I have all the elements here to implement a squeeze, uh, a double squeeze, and bring myself the extra trick that I need. So, all the masses decide which one I'm going to play for. Well, I don't know. Um, I, I very rarely do split entry um, central suits. I'm rather inclined to go for the Queen Doubleton in one hand and Ace to three in the other because it's rare and I just want to go and do something that's rare. So, um, so, um, uh, 
the way that you work for that one is, uh, well, first of all, so you've got to go and take this and, and well, I can't throw a heart. That's my threat card. I've got to throw a spade. And I'm not going to leave anything to chance. So I'm going to draw the trumps next, I think, to make sure that no accidents occur. So many squeezes, I... Maybe wrecking the one I want to play, but I want to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Uh, so you can throw clubs, and I don't need a spade. And that's the last diamond gone. Jolly good. Now, uh, this squeeze works by playing the squeeze card from the hand with the ace small, small central suit. So that means I should unblock the ace of spades for this uh, particular squeeze. I assume I'm right that east has the king. And now I can make it a pure ending by crossing back in the heart suit. Now I'm all ready to roll. I've got ace to three opposite queen doubleton. I've got my two single threats in the other hand. Here we go. We're looking out for uh, the watch part of the thing. Um, I'm looking out for the king of spades, which I expect to come from east. And I'm looking for the jack of clubs, which I expect to come from west. So um, I throw that away. And that's... Um, Useless, another diamond, and uh, West will probably throw a spade. That's not very really useful. I have to keep my threat card there. And now this should be the squeeze card. So I'm particularly looking for the jack of clubs. Nope, it hasn't come. So I throw away my threat card here. And is he going to play the king of spades? No, he's kept the king of spades. So, hopefully, they both unguarded the heart suit. Oh, I so rarely do one of these split entry squeezes. Oh, this is so much fun. And lo and behold, there it comes, the last card. King of the Earth. So, again, um, I was using my new method of working backwards. I knew where the guards were, so that alerted me I only needed to go looking for double squeezes. Then I used where were my threats? They were both in the same hand. That led to an automatic squeeze. And then was my central suit there and up to strength? Yes. And I could have actually done it in the more normal way of ending in dummy with ace, king, seven as my threat suit in hand. But I wanted to show off and, and do the... Uh, uh, to do the, the rarer uh, split entry uh, extended threat squeeze. So I did, I went and showed off. Um, but again, notice the sequence is, is pulling you in towards which squeeze is going to work. Um, if that one hadn't worked, it would, then I'd have gone back and said, OK, I've also got threats in the heart, so then I'd have tried my club of my heart threat, and then I'd have tried my heart and my spade threat, until either I find I can't make the content at all, or one of the squeezes is going to work. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, I've got no notes about where this one came from. Um, opening bid is Wando Trump, which is... Um, 15 to 17, so um, who knows where I was watching this one. Um, partner passes, and the next person passes. And I read in the Bridge magazines that the best defense to a strong low trump is a convention called Mechwell, named after, of course, of Rodwell and Mextroth, who are a famous uh, bridge playing partnership. Um, and in that system, Two Heart shows a uh, six card heart suit and a dos strength to bid. 
Um, it goes um, uh, pass, of course, by the on the Trump person, and our partner bids three hearts, inviting me to game. So I don't know. It's quite a good suit. Would I have done it without the Ace of Diamonds? I might have done. I, I, I might. I, I like interfering with one no Trump. So uh, the suit is really the sort of quality suit you'd expect for a two heart bid. But owning an ace is a, a strong thing. I, I must say, if this was match points, I would pass because at match points you just want to go and get positive scores. At uh, imp scoring, you always want to go and bid game whenever you can because the money always lies in bidding your game. So I'm really overbidding this a bit, but I'm going to bid four hearts and hope partner's got a bit to spare for his bidding. Okay, what's the lead? Ah, the King of Spades. Well, um, I'll do my due diligence in a bit. There's not a lot I can do at the moment. So follow suit. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, a jack, um, any high card honour, uh, is either a doubleton or it shows a solid sequence. Uh, jack 10, 9, maybe jack 10, 9, 8 even. It's a signal to partner that if he has ace, king and not the queen, then uh, the suit should be, un should be, should change suit and get him in to lead his 10 through my hypothetical queen and so pick it up. So, um, so it says quite a lot about the East Hand. I also play it as showing an even number. Uh, I don't know whether that's standard. I have discussed this with my partner and said, since our main system is count. Uh, similarly, if, if East had played the Queen, he'd be showing a solid sequence of Queen 10 9 and suggesting to partner that he can under lead, since surely partner's got the ace over there. But basically, a high honour shows a solid sequence up to that. Uh, card and then not the card above. Anyway, um, I don't think should I? No, I can't think I, there's no deception here really. Okay, well there's the card we knew was missing. Okay. And there the ace. And the nine. Okay, that's interesting. So east will have the ten of spades. So Already, I'm looking at options because I don't have to rough this. Um, I could discard a losing club and try and rough out the club suit, for instance, or something like that. So let's try and work out what we're going to do. First of all, due diligence. What do we have? We have six heart tricks, all being well. I hope somebody doesn't have jack to four. Um, we have... One diamond trick, that's seven. We have ace, king, clubs, nine. Lovely, okay. So I just need one more trick, and I have various ways of proceeding. Um, well, I don't see what's special about throwing a club and rough I could just rough the, rough the spade and, and just concede a club. That would go and uh, bring in the clubs so if they're 3-3. Three, three. Really, the question I should consider is, can I use that seven of spades in a squeeze? Because if I can, it's going to be very dangerous to duck a club. They will almost certainly play another spade, and then I will not have the seven of spades there to execute a squeeze with it. So let's have a think about, can I use the seven of spades in the squeeze? Well, where are the other guards? Well... Uh, West Open won no Trump, and he's shown in this nine high card points so far. So West will have the King of Diamonds and the Queen of Clubs for sure. That will bring him up to 14, and he might have the Jack of Hearts, might have the Jack of Clubs, might have both of those to make up his bid. Or her bid, I'm not sure, the sex. Um, so anyway, the guards are certainly going to be in the West hand. So I am looking at a spade guard against East, who's got the ten of spades, and a diamond, the queen of diamonds, or, or maybe, because uh, West might have four clubs, maybe a, maybe a club guard against West. Those are split threats. My opponents are at leisure. So I'd be looking at a double squeeze, 
And where are my threats? Uh, the seven of, uh, well, they're going to need a central suit. That looks like it should be the club suit to me. So I'm going to have the seven of spades as a threat, the queen of diamonds as a threat. They are in the same hand. So that means it's an automatic double squeeze for which I need uh, a double entry. I got ace. Uh, wait a bit, though. I got ace, king, six of clubs. Wonderful, wonderful. But they're supposed to be in my hand. They're supposed to be opposite the threats. So, in fact, the double squeeze is not going to work because I don't have the right position for my central suit. So... That's the information I need to know. The seven of spades is actually useless to me as a threat card, and I don't have to worry about the opposition killing it off and ruining any squeeze. So the right thing to do must be to duck a club and see what results after that. In fact, can I do more in my mind? Yes, uh, I know about the threats on the left-hand side. If I do duck a club... I've got good chances of a simple squeeze against West, because West is probably going to be busy, and I've got an entry suit and a single threat in clubs and diamonds. I reckon the simple squeeze is going to be the way forward. But let's start by roughing this card. Do I have to rough low? Yeah, okay, rough low. Um, let's cross to dummy. I have entries. Uh, okay, and leave the nine in case I need it. Ah, okay, that's the trumps done. So now I'm going to dot my club, and that plays for the club break, and for so in fact the squeeze is guaranteed now. I think West has shown three spades and two hearts. That's that's five cards. So, unless he's got a six-card diamond suit, he must have any length in clubs. So, I'm sure I've actually got a simple squeeze here with an entry threat in the clubs, a simple threat in the diamond suit, and it's just a matter of actually executing the thing. Ah, killing my threat card. I knew they'd do that. That's well, no problem. So, um, I've got a blocking card in the diamond suit so I need to well, I don't need to I could play it later no no I'll, I'll make this a pure situation let's see besides which I it's more easy to see if West is unguarding things the queen of diamonds is my single threat that's the one I watch out for uh, and it's um it's a rank threat, so only the King of Diamonds. I just have to look for the one card, and it's all set up. The extended cards in the club suit don't matter. Extensions never do. So here we go. Uh, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Queen of Hearts. And now the Ten of Hearts. Come on, my friend. Are you going to play your King of Diamonds? Nope. Well, I reckon I'm done with the Queen of Diamonds now. It has to go. I reckon he's unguarded the club suit, and I'm going to find out and see whether I'm right. And come on, come on. yes, he's got the ah, There we go. Another successful squeeze. And this time it just turned out to be a simple squeeze. But I say, it could have been a double squeeze involving uh, the, the space suit. So that's why you do this procedure of saying, you know, what squeezes are possible. We checked it out, and it turned out the spade threat was utterly useless to us. So then we set about producing a threat in the club suit to go and generate a different sort of squeeze. But on another layout, it might have been the spade that was absolutely crucial to us, and then I would certainly adopt that trick to make sure that East never got a chance to go and kill my spade threat if I wanted to keep my spade threat. Well, I've got one last one, which is... Um, Mm, I liked it. Um, it's uh, it's something from a year ago from um, uh, from the new Bridge magazine. Here, let me put it to the table. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, <coughs> and it was um, 
Uh, it's from the Shapiro Spring Fours, and if you don't know that competition, it is the most highly ranked competition in Britain. Probably higher ranked than the Gold Cup itself, actually. Uh, everybody who plays in it, it's, a, it's what's called a double knockout. Uh, so you, you play a decent number of boards, I think 32, and you're allowed to lose once, but if you lose twice, you're out of the competition. And every team that enters, every single player is effectively an expert. It really is, and it attracts people from all over the continent as well. It's a very, very strong competition. So everybody's an expert. Um, okay, so um, I don't know what system they were playing. Um, just um, I was just reading the magazine, really. Uh, three clubs. Uh, very typical of the modern day. You can't see the East Hand, and I don't want to show you everything, but if I tell you it's King 9-6 to six and vulnerable, it does show you uh, modern thinking. Uh, people, experts, do seem to believe that it is more important to try and cramp the bidding for the opponents rather than worry about constructive bidding or about giving clues away to assist the opponents. Personally, I say I just think they're remembering the occasional success story. Uh, all the time in the magazines, I read hands where the bidding has actually helped the opponents rather than hindered them. So, not a fan of uh, East Three Club bid. Um, okay, well, uh, we are on the borderline here. We really want to do something with 10. And I've got a club stop for sure. Uh, my only bid is three no trumps, which is an overbid. But hey, you're playing for match points. You never get rich by underbidding and not bidding games at match. At, uh, sorry, not match points. Uh, imps. So uh, an overbid. But what else? Can, you can hardly double. You've got the clubs. You're not short in the club suit. So yeah, that's what you have to go and do. You have to go and ride with the thing. Partner has a very strong hand, but knows your bidding might be cramped. Um, oops, misclick there. So he bids uh, four no trumps, which of course is invitational. Whenever you raise a no trump bid, it's always saying, "Do you have anything to spare?" And you certainly don't have anything to spare. So this is one of the quickest passes you've ever managed. And the lead was the jack of clubs. So. Just as I told you, see, um, if I'd been left to my own devices, I would have no idea where the jack of clubs is. But because of this uh, pressure bid, as they call it, of three clubs, West has led the jack. And now I know I've got a trick coming out of my queen and ten of clubs, all because of the bidding. It's, it's as I describe it, really, they, they do it, but I'm really not sure that they should be doing it. Right, well, always lie to the opposition, so play the four and not the three. Due diligence. Um, three spades, two hearts for five, club for six already, diamond for seven. Oh, quite a bit to go. So, obviously, I'm going to try and get uh, tricks out of the heart suit. Probably two, that will bring you up to nine. And then I have my queen ten of clubs now, which is a definite trick once I get rid of the king of clubs. So I have my ten. So let's concentrate on the implementation. Obviously, hearts first. There's no concern about any other suit. So I'd like to, I think, finesse twice. See, if West has the queen and the jack, I could pick up the whole of the heart suit with my ten, nine, eight, seven. But I don't have the entries, really. I, I can't see using up my ace of diamonds and ace of spades to keep taking finesses in heart. So um, there might be a singleton on it, though. He's with his preemptive hand. I'm going to cash the ace and just play for four heart tricks. Uh, nope, no singleton there. Okay. Do I need to unblock the ace? No, I don't think so. So what do I do next? Well, it's wrong to cash the king. Because West might still have Queen Jack to four. So the right technique now is to play towards my ten of hearts. That will knock out one of West's honours. And then after that, I'll have the eight of hearts left. And I can finesse 
a king and the nine, was if I just cash the king, I might provide two trips for them. So next need is this, and I see I've been wasting my time, um, because there's nothing special about the heart soup at all, but next time there will be. These are the thoughts you have to have to go and ask the... Uh, in the, in the play of the contract. Um, so I planned for West having these hearts, and in fact, they were just breaking through. Too. He switches to a spade, so I don't particularly want to be in dummy. I want to go and set up my club trick here. Okay. So this is going to be my tenth trick. There. And the hearts are good, the spades might be good, so I'll throw away the diamond. And really, he should duck this. He's got king nine of clubs, and the normal rule is keep a, uh, keep a tennis in the suit rather than cash your king and leave yourself with subsidiary cards. But uh, he won the king, which is very, very nice of him because now I have all the tricks but one. If you have a look, I've got um, three hearts and a diamond and two spades, which is uh, six. Is that right? Three hearts. Oh, and the ten of clubs. That's seven. So I've got seven tricks with um, eight tricks to go with seven winners. So it's very sweet of him to actually win. And he played about the nine of clubs because he has the eight and he's sort of desperately hoping to set up a trick. So I win with my ten. Um discard and again I can't use the diamond might have tricks in the spades so win there and now I try out my spade suit and they don't break but now I have wonderful news because I know uh, that West has the guards in the spades against the seven of spades. I have a guard with my three of clubs, because I know that East has two clubs remaining. I have all the tricks except one, and oh look, I've got um, the, the the threat, sorry, let's do this in the right order. Our guards are split, so we're looking at if there is a squeeze, a double squeeze. Where are my threats? They're split. I've got one in the north hand, one in the south hand, so that would make it a positional squeeze um, do I have a central suit yes you only need ace and an irritant for that's ace and five of diamonds for a central squeeze and you need the threats over the uh, uh, the guards so indeed the seven of spades is over the spade guard the three of clubs is over the club guard so I have a positional double squeeze and why I loved it is because at this point, South claimed and East and West agreed and put their cards away. Because as I said, everybody in this competition is an expert. So we're not the only ones who knows how to go and do squeezes. South certainly did. And East and West also knew how to go. And they, reckon, they all recognized the squeeze. And so for them... The whole hand was over at this point as soon as Declarer put his heart hand down. But for us, well, I'm just going to play it out for you. Um, let's see. We have uh, a positional squeeze. <coughs> we split threats. Uh, the uh, way to play it is to end up in the hand opposite the, uh, the, the central suit. So we want to go and end up in dummy so we can play across to the ace of diamonds. So I want to cash any winners I've got in hand. Uh, ooh, I, uh, I don't have any winners left in hand. So I simply go across to Dummy and run all the cards over there. Uh, so King of Spades, and he'll throw one of his clubs. King of Spades there. Ah, I keep clicking and it didn't move. Okay, now we're going to run our hearts. Diamond. There it goes. And now another heart. Another diamond. And I only need ace and the irritant. So 
That's from a diamond. And now the squeeze card. East has to go and keep his club threat. So East is going to be forced into unguarding the diamonds. My club threat has done his job. I throw it away. And now West has to go and keep the spade threat. So West has to unguard the diamonds. And so who would have thought it is going to be that little five of diamonds, which is my final card to make the contract. And so it's a bit of a whimper because this was actually for imps and he's managed to make an extra overture, which probably gained him one imp. Uh, but hey, it's the fun of playing these squeezes, isn't it? And uh, and also, I, I just thought it was so nice that at this point he just claimed the contract. He didn't have to go and play it out and show the opposition what was going to happen. Everybody could see what was going to happen because they're at that level. Really impressive, isn't it? And that, I'm afraid, is the end of our time together, at least for the near future. I'm looking forward to a rest. And I hope you all do loads and loads of lovely squeezes in the future. I hope everything we've done is useful to you. Do practice it in real life play. Um, I'm done, Adam. If you want to make any announcements your way. Yeah, just the same as usual, uh, that um, you can find the uh, recordings of these uh, sessions and of the sessions that Alan and I have done together. Uh, on YouTube, at, if you look for Cedars Squeezes, I'll just write it to the table, just so that you know how it's spelt. Um, oh, I can't write to the table because I'm a spectator. It's C-E-D-A-R, apostrophe S, and then Squeezes. And they're all there, and this one hopefully will be up within the next... 20 minutes or so. I uh, hope you've all enjoyed it. I certainly have. Thanks, Alan, for all your time. And I guess that we'll see whether Alan feels up to doing a series on something else um, in a little while, a few weeks maybe. Lovely. Okay. Um, well, uh, usual things now. I'm about to leave the table, which will force it to collapse. And Kathy's about to shut down the Skype call. And if I ever do come back, um, well, um, no doubt uh, Sanya and other um, club operatives will let you know well in time of the other. But at the moment, I can't even think of something I want to go and do, really. And certainly I feel like a rest. And thanks to everyone for the uh, lovely messages they're sending to the table. All really nice of you. And um, we've been delighted to give our time up, haven't we, Alan? Yes, um, um, I just hope, I, um, hope I've helped people to uh, how to recognise and implement squeezes. So really, once you get used to the concepts involved, they're really not all that... They, these are hard because they've got choices to where to come from, but so many squeezes are really just a matter of there's only one. And you just recognise the, the 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 materials are just used. And it just good. I hope everybody does that. Florette did write to me once and said she did her first squeeze. It made my heart burst with pride. I have to go and tell you. Well, thanks again to everyone. Um, it's been great having you along, and we'll get as I say, I'll get this one up um, as soon as I can. And uh, maybe we'll come back with something in the future. Okay. Um, collapsing the table, everybody. And after that, it's up to Cathy what she does with the call.